So today on FTD Facts, we've been learning a lot about many different cool, unique fighters, planes, jets, whatever you're interested in. But for this video, we're going to look at a very particular aircraft, and that is the Sepcat or Sipicat Jaguar. It's got a weird way of how it's pronounced. What's going on, guys? Dave Waffle here, and welcome to FTD Facts, the channel where we look at people, cultures, places, and militaries from around the world and yep today you got it you see it in the thumbnail this is the fighter we're talking about today i found this one really interesting first of all i like the word jaguar i'm just you know the animal's just a cool thing and you know cars being called jaguars are awesome so heck the plane's got to be just as awesome too right but interesting enough though the jaguar's got quite of a rather unique history and that's what we're going to look at today but other than that, before we get in this video, if you guys like military content, just be sure to keep an eye out in the description box below or in the cards above the video at any time because I got some cool military themed playlists that I think you guys will really enjoy. And probably the biggest thing, if you guys are just really interested in improving on your own grammar, you guys should check out Grammarly.com. Really cool program. It's for free. I'll talk about it later at the end of the video, but let's get started on the Jaguar. So the Sepcat Jaguar is a super old British French jet attack aircraft, originally which was used by the British Royal Air Force and the French Air Force in close air support and even nuclear strike roles. This plane was originally conceived in the 1960s as a jet trainer with light ground attack capability. However, the requirements for the aircraft soon changed to include supersonic performance, reconnaissance, and even tactical nuclear strike roles. In 1962, the British sought to replace their aging series of Falland Knot T Mark 1s and Hawker Hunter T Mark 7 trainers with a more advanced supersonic type of aircraft, while in the same hand, the French were looking for an intermediate subsonic aircraft type to replace their Fuga Magister and Lockheed T-33 jet trainers. And it was in 1965 that the two nations decided to come together with an agreement being signed in 1966. The two sides were represented by the BAC, which is the British Aircraft Corporation, and the Breguette, which is the French counterpart. And the production of this aircraft then began. Now, this was a collaborative effort given the acronym SEPCAT, or S-E-P-E-C-A-T which basically translates to the European Production Company for Combat Training and Tactical Support Aircraft. After the production game steamed, there was a lot of confusion, however, with the requirements of these two countries. Basically, these two countries had their own separate demands and that created some problems. Finally, the two sides, however, came to the conclusion of sharing the profits and settled with the Breguet BR-121 concept with the wings and high lift elements designed by the BAC. Now, the initial prototypes were a two-seater aircraft, and its first flight was recorded on September 8, 1968. Now, these prototypes had a Rolls-Royce engine within it, known as the Turbo Mecha Adour MK-101 engine. And interesting enough, although these engines lacked power, they still exhibited excellent life and gave the jet good range initially. Now, as far as avionics where the aircraft is concerned, the Variant A had a reliable double gyroscopic system and a Doppler radar derived from the MiG-3E. As well, the GR-1s had a totally new digital system with an inertial navigation system and heads-up display, plus laser ranging and marked targeting systems in the nose. Thing is, with these systems, however, they were rather new and they were really advanced and the reliability of them was quite low, but they did find them useful. Now, of course, there were some different models like the Jaguar S, which the S stood for strike models. Now, these were inducted by the French, whereas the British chose to apply a more formal designation known as the Jaguar GR Mark I. Now, they inducted about 165 of these single-seat GR Mark Ones and approximately 35 TK Mark II Jaguar Bs, which were the two-seater trainer aircraft. Later, the French also acquired the Jaguar A, which is a single-seat attack model, as well as 40 Jaguar E two-seater trainers. By 1971, however, the Breguet Aviation Firm became bought out by the Dassault Company, in which they had the same policy of profit-sharing with the British. 
However, there became a little bit of a problem because Dassault wanted to make more money and wanted to sell more of these aircrafts. Basically, they wanted to sell the Jaguar M, which was a naval carrier variant to the French. And this indeed did jeopardize the British and they felt slightly betrayed in the joint venture, which resulted in the failure of the production of the Jaguar M. Later, the Jaguar International came out, which was developed to be fed to foreign markets. One of the biggest purchasers of this variant was India, who became the largest customer and began handling a licensed production for the aircraft by the HAL, which is the Hindu Aeronautics Limited Company, under the designation known as the Shamsher. Originally, 38 of these were purchased by India. However, they managed to produce their own, which came in at about 140. And as a matter of fact, there are still six squadrons of these aircrafts being used by the Indian Air Force as of today. Speaking of which, let's take a look at some of the operators of this aircraft. Now, the creators of the plane obviously were the French and the British. They retired their fleet of Jaguars by 2005 and 2007, eventually being replaced by the Dassault Raphael or the Eurofighter Typhoon. Now, other former operators were the countries of Oman, Ecuador, and Nigeria, whom all have which retired their planes by now. Currently, as I stated, India is the only major operator of this aircraft. And as a matter of fact, in August of 2017, the first flight was recorded for the Indian maritime minded Jaguar strike aircraft. On top of that, India plans to modernize the weapon capabilities of this version, as well as navigation, avionics, and electronic warfare. The work is scheduled to be completed by 2022, and some 61 out of 157 Jaguars will be upgraded to this fashion. On top of that, it was also part of Aero India 2019, which was a modernized upgrade form of the Jaguar, revealed obviously by the Hindu Aeronautics Limited company known as the Jaguar Max. Some of the changes for this aircraft were a new digital cockpit, support for all air weaponry, active electronically scanned array radar units. Other improvements are also built in jamming capabilities, enhanced survivability. With that, let's take a quick peek at some of the different variants. Originally, you have your Jaguar A, which was the single seat, all weather tactical strike ground attack fighter version for the French Air Force. Now two prototypes and approximately 160 of these aircrafts were built. The Jaguar B was the two-seater version built for the Royal Air Force. One prototype and approximately 38 of these were built for that country. The Jaguar E was the two-seater version for France. They did have two prototypes and 40 of these made. The Jaguar S or the more famous Jaguar GR1. Now these were the single seat all weather tactical strike ground attack versions for the Royal Air Force. This is probably the more famous one because 165 of these were built. They were equipped with navigation, weapon aiming subsystems, which were used for attacking ground units without the use of radar. Eventually the engines were replaced by the Adore MK101 after 1978. The Jaguar M was also the one that was going to be made for the French Navy, but was canceled. The Jaguar International, as I mentioned earlier, was based on the Jaguar S and the Jaguar B. And lastly, of course, the newer Jaguar Max, which is the newer version made by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Now specifications, let's look at some of the finer details of this aircraft. For speed, however, like I always say, at different altitudes, this does change because at sea level, it can go up to Mach 1.1, Whereas at altitudes of over 36,000 feet, this plane can go up to Mach 1.6. And of course, for the sizes of this aircraft, they did change from variant to variant. Basically for your A and S variants, the length comes in at 16.83 meters. Whereas the B and E variant come in a little bigger at 17.53 meters. The wingspan, however, is the same across the board as its standard is 8.69 meters. And the height, of course, is the same for all variants coming in at 4.89 meters. Now, generally the arsenal for the Sepcat Jaguar has two times 30 millimeter caliber DEFA cannons, which can hold up to 150 rounds. For the hard points though, this aircraft usually has about five. Basically you have four under the wing and one in the center line. 
The aircraft is capable of holding up to 10,000 pounds, being able to carry a combination of either rockets, missiles, or bombs. For example, for rockets, it can carry eight Matra rocket pods with 18 SNEB 68 millimeter rockets each. For missiles, most of these carry the AS-37 Martel anti-radar missiles or the AS-30L laser-guided air-to-ground missiles. But more commonly for your air-to-air -air missiles, you'll see the two AI Sidewinder missiles. And last but not least, let's talk about some of the combat history and where these things have been seen. These fighters have seen combat so far in the Persian Gulf under Operation Granby, which was launched by the British post the invasion of Kuwait. For this particular operation, a detachment of 12 Jaguars flew from Oman and Bahrain air bases and did approximately 612 combat sorties, with no aircrafts lost. During the Kargil War of 1999 between India and Pakistan, these were one of the main fighters used within the operation. Throughout this conflict, the Indian Air Force defined the Sepakat Jaguar as a deep penetrating strike aircraft. On top of that, Indian Jaguars were also used to carry out reconnaissance missions in support of Indian peacekeeping missions in Sri Lanka between 1987 and 1990. For France, they used a lot of these aircrafts in the conflicts within Chad. There was also Libya. And of course, they were a part of the Gulf War and the Kosovo conflict. Overall, in total, there have been 543 of these aircrafts made. And as for cost, back in 2008, one of these aircrafts cost approximately 8 million US dollars. Whereas in today's world, that would come in at around roughly 9.4 million. Either way, guys, that is it. That is me looking at the Sepcat Jaguar. Hope you guys like this video. Let me know your thoughts on it down there. Other than that, my name is Dave Wobble. And before you guys get out of here, be sure to check out Grammarly.com. It's a really good free program that can help improve your grammar. It's really fantastic. I do strongly recommend it. You can download it on your phone. You can use it wherever. It's great. It's down there in the description box below. On top of that, don't forget to check out our cool playlists on other military conflicts and military you know, themes that you guys would be interested in. I don't know why my tongue just went blah there, but I'm Dave Wapple. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys, so here's those playlists that I was telling you all about. So if you guys know that we missed anything in this video, feel free to let us know with that information down there. But other than that, thanks for joining with us and we'll see you later. Bye.